Hi there. Um, so nowadays, when you go to a conference, WordPress conference of any kind, it's hard to avoid uh, talk about the REST API. And I'm not going to be an exception to that rule. So uh, briefly today about how you can practically use WordPress is the REST API that already exists in the core. And specifically, how you can use that to replace the admin Ajax uh, .php uh, and why I think that should be avoided. So, uh, as you know, when you communicate with the JavaScript and the PHP side, uh, you, you use Ajax to do that. And historically in, in WordPress, uh, you do that by calling this uh, cryptic uh, WP admin slash admin Ajax .php, which uh, even though it's has uh, admin twice in the, the URL has, doesn't have to do anything with the admin uh, functionality at all. Um, and why I think that it's bad, well, I don't think it's bad, but it's, it's, uh, it has a lot of limitations. Uh, one of the biggest reasons is that it's very inefficient, and the reason that is is that it's run on the admin context. And a lot of, especially bad plugins, load a lot of stuff assuming that, the, that it is needed in, in the WordPress admin, but it uh, might not be. Uh, so that can really uh, bring the server down, especially because those calls cannot really be cached because they've used uh, historically in many different ways, and, and some uh, where specific hosts even uh, advocate using admin Ajax as a way to bypass the cache. So if you're in a shared hosting environment or something like that, it can really bring the server down if you have, ha have bad plugins installed. Uh, also, it doesn't have any sort of um, infrastructure uh, in, in terms of authentication or data validation or anything like that, so it's very basic. And that can lead into to messy code, my favorite thing. Um, so it's too ad hoc for, for a lot of um, uh, things. But uh, uh, in 4.4 version of the WordPress, which came out uh, last December, we now have the REST API, kinda. Because kind, I say kinda because there are no built-in endpoints yet, just the infrastructure part. Uh, which means that there are the auto layers of, of that uh, API are miss, still missing, so you can't really work with the native data types yet, uh, except if you install the full REST API plugin, but that's still under development and the API is not frozen yet fully, so you need to be able to track those, those changes uh, and uh, modify your code accordingly. The, the freeze is coming, though. But anyway, uh, if you have that installed, then you can do a lot without writing any PHP code. You can, for example, query related posts uh, by category, for example, or you could, uh, well, you could build a, like a form for your users to, users to post stories, provided that the permissions are set correctly. Um, but we, what can you do without uh, with, with what the core already has? Um, well, I'll give you an example, and my example is this comment reactions plugin that I've written. Um, if you use Slack, you know reactions. They are a way to uh, basically comment uh, without actually saying anything. Just attach an emoji uh, to to something. Um, it looks looks like this. And uh, this is a very simple plugin, but it, it will post that uh, reaction to WordPress uh, through Ajax, obviously, and uh, we'll store that as comment meta. That's it. Uh, but I wanted to convert that into using the REST API in instead of the admin Ajax for the reasons I, I just uh, told you about. And let's have a look what it looks like. Uh, so before we go into what, what the REST version is, then let's look at the, um, the original version that uses the admin Ajax. So 
Uh, first piece of the puzzle is this uh, WP localized script, which is uh, just like admin Ajax, uh, doesn't have a lot to do with its name. It can be used in other ways than just to localize scripts. And this, uh, in this case, we are communicating the, uh, the URL from the PHP side to the JavaScript to uh, post that reaction into. And uh, well, of course, we could hard code that into uh, JavaScript, but we aren't bad developers, so we don't do that. Um, there's nothing much inter more interesting there. Then the uh, JavaScript part is also pretty simple. Um, here we are posting the reaction using that URL that we just gave it uh, back to, to WordPress. And we have some parameters uh, of that for that request as, as the payload of that post. Uh, we have the action which ties into this specific uh, hook in WordPress. Uh, I'll show you that in a later, a bit later, and then the comment ID, the reaction itself, and the direction of that uh, reaction. And then this is where things get a bit more complicated. Uh, the server-side code we have to hook into two different uh, two different hooks, uh, one for non-logged in users and one for logged in users. This is just how admin Ajax works. And then we have the bulk of the the actual uh, request handler, this uh, function that spans two slides. Uh, you don't have to read it all, but I'll just point out that it does quite a lot. It sets a header uh, for being the content type being JSON. We do some reading data from the post using the helper function that is not described here. We are sanitizing data. We are uh, returning or actually echoing some uh, JSON directly to the response and exiting. Uh, and once we finally get to update the comment meta, after that we'll uh, uh, write mo some more JSON and remember to exit. Otherwise, it'll uh, the JSON won't be valid. So we have to remember to do a lot of things. But after, uh, uh, I'll describe the sa same pieces, kind of. So this uh, localized script part, pretty much the same, uh, except that we define this uh, rest namespace here. Uh, it's, it's the kind of the URL uh, part that, that will give it some namespace. It's name of the, the plugin comment dash reactions slash v1, where the v1 uh, e, uh, means the version number, which we can then maybe later change without affecting the API uh, if we want to keep serving the old, old one as well. Other, uh, other than that, it's basically the same. Instead of get, uh, giving the Ajax URL, we are giving the, the REST URL, in this case using the get REST URL function, now in 4.4, and then appending that uh, uh, namespace after that. Also, the jQuery part is pretty much the same, uh, with some mi minor changes. We are obviously calling that address URL, but then we are appending that uh, slash comment slash comment ID directly to the URL instead of posting that uh, as, uh, as the, the post payload. And that is part of the rest, uh, restfulness, kind of, kind of the ide ideology and the concept. And you should uh, look it up if, if rest is not a familiar concept with you. It's, it's, it's a bit different than just calling functions remotely. Um, but we are also sending some data, the reaction and the action, just like before as the payload. Uh, but here things get more interesting. The server-side implementation is kind of split in two. Um, we are registering a REST route first. It's, it's one of those new functions in 4.4, and this way we'll keep tell the REST API kind of that this is where uh, this uh, endpoint can be found. Um, it, I'll give it two, uh, three different parameters, first one being the namespace we defined earlier, uh, the second one being the actual kind of the, uh, the URL, uh, slash comment, slash comment ID, and that's defined in regular expressions, yet another thing you really need to learn. Uh, <laughs> well, this, this is pretty simple uh, in this case, though. 
And the third one being the bulk of the function call. Uh, we are defining the callback, uh, which is the function that uh, will get called if the REST API determines that this request uh, matches this uh, route. And the arguments, which are basically the parameters of that, uh, that uh, uh, route, and we have the ID, uh, reaction, and action. The ID comes straight from the URL, and rest of it are from the payload. And for each, I'm defining here the validation callback in, as an inline function. And they, that function should return true or false. If, if the parameter is valid, we return true. And if it's false, then the REST API will automatically know that there's something wrong with the call and would uh, also know how to send the proper HTTP response code back. Uh, no need to define your uh, own headers or uh, custom JSON. Uh, but if it's, uh, if it's valid, valid, then we can move on to the next parameter and finally to the, the callback function. And now the actual uh, handler code is, is way simpler now uh, because we don't have to care about if the data that is passed to it is valid or not. We know it's valid. Um, we can just do our business and, and, and on the last line just return the REST response object with some data that we want to pass to the, to the JavaScript part back. Uh, the best practice is, is to implement all this in a more uh, object-oriented way, uh, implementing this REST controller uh, object uh, uh, by inheriting it, but that's not available if you don't have the REST API plugin installed. And all the same concepts apply, it just has more infrastructure around it, like uh, authentication and, and permission handling and stuff like that. In summary, use the REST API instead of admin Ajax. In most cases, it's, it's the better way. It's faster, it's cleaner, and it's both easy to implement and migrate to. Thank you. <laughs>